All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Meeting of the Carver Select Board for Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. This meeting is being cablecast by Area 58 Community Access Media, Channel 15, and will be posted by Area 58 on YouTube as soon as possible. There are openings on several committees. Please refer to the Select Board page on our website for a listing and application. If we could all stand for the pledge. Our community prayer. Almighty God, humbly we pray your blessing as we concern our life with the opportunity to serve our community. Enhance us with your spirit of dignity and selflessness. May we become instruments of support and understanding as we seek to bring an environment of trust and purpose among all who provide the many services that make us all that we can become. Help us achieve the goals of our commitment in this office that is now our responsibility. And especially, we lift our prayers to all of our citizens in the community that we have been allowed to serve and that they may discover the fullness and joy of life that we all seek. And keep those serving in our armed forces and our first responders in our hearts and thoughts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Belvin. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda this evening is citizens' participation. Are there any members of the public who would like to? Mr. Shea, please. Step up to the microphone. Uh, if it's all right, I'm going to approach and drop off handouts. I only need five, so. Sorry. Can I just get one just copy? Just one, yeah. I'll give it to Bob. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that what you can get closest to? Uh, Bob and I are going to check. Yep, we check. <laughs> Cornelia Shea, 148 Plymouth Street, Carver, Massachusetts. Speaking as a private citizen and not as a representative of any board or committee. Um, I have some issues in regards to the, um, some of the uh, articles submitted to the town warrant by the, Rede uh, the RDA, the Redevelopment Authority. And I'll try and keep it to my three minutes. Um, the Redevelopment Authority, as an independent body, politic, and corporate, is not an agent of a municipality as defined by the Department of Housing and Community Development. At the 3-4-2022 Select Board meeting, uh, the Select Board voted to put articles submitted by the RDA on the town warrant prior to any public hearing or presentation to the Planning Board for vote or review. The select board thereby circumvented the planning board, ZBA, and the regional plan planning agency SERPID from any action prior to town meeting and undermined the weight and intent of public hearings. These articles were identified by the chairman, Mark Townsend, as having been brought forth jointly by the planning board and the RDA. Uh, as a point of clarification, this is not true. The planning board at no time voted on these articles or worked in conjunction with the RDA to develop or submit to the select board these changes to the zoning bylaws. These articles were wholly and totally submitted by the RDA as both identified in the draft warrant and public hearings. At the 3.30 and 3.31 public hearings of 2022 by the planning board, it was clearly identified that these articles are not being issued or put forth from the planning board, but were in fact wholly submitted by the RDA. It was also clarified that the planning board was only allowed to issue recommendations to town meeting on these proposed articles as they had been put on the warrant by the select board. The RDA has no power to submit zoning changes or warrant articles to the select board as identified in Mass General Law 40A Section 5 and as RDA powers are defined by Mass General Law Chapter 121B, Section 11, which I, I've provided copies of, the powers of the RDA are almost strictly limited to project oversight and management. All of these proposed zoning changes should be eligible for variances through the ZBA. 
This process provides for public hearings and mitigation in regards to site conditions, allowing both transparency and public input. The proposed changes to the zoning bylaw are project specific, overly broad, and poorly developed as they never went through the proper review of the agencies tasked with the oversight and implementation of the zoning bylaws. As there is no official project in consideration, these articles are problematic based on the allowed uses of the Green Business Park. Some of the uses allowed, such as childcare facilities, offices, retail spaces, hospitals, hotels, and colleges, have to be taken into account when addressing any and all changes to our zoning bylaws. Should the town wish to develop another green business park in Carver, these project-specific changes are very likely to create substantial pro problems. Uh, the exemption for earth removal in regard to the planning board and earth removal committee, um, forgive me for not knowing the warrant number because it was just presented to me, um, but uh, the exemptions from the planning board and earth removal committee uh, never went, underwent the public hearing process. A vote of recommendation or a vote of recommendation from the board. Um, and, and just in this, this, this two minutes that I've had to look over this, this warrant, changes were made by the RDA at the planning board meeting the vote that was taken at the planning board meeting was whether or not to recommend these article changes. These changes are not in this warrant. Article sub uh, footnote 11 of Article 10 is crossed off when specifically we voted on, and this is just one of the examples in regards to this, that was supposed to be uh, removed from the article and not stricken from um, the warrant bylaws. So, Basically, the planning board sat through five and a half hours of public hearings last week with a lot, a lot of public input, and it amounts to zip, zero zilch nada. It's, it's totally circumventing the public process. These articles should not be on the, uh, on the warrant. The ZBA has no authority to present them. Clearly, the select board didn't uh, present them because as presented to the planning board, they were submitted by the RDA. And, and, and just looking at it, none of the changes taken place at the public hearing are contained in these warrant articles. It's, it's, it's very concerning and problematic, and it, and it shows a lack of forthrightness and transparency. Uh, I understand there's a lot going on. You guys are very busy, but I I'm sure at the very least you understand who's allowed to submit articles, and you should be very clear on who has submitted articles uh, to the board. Uh, when you put this on the, the town warrant back on March 4th, I believe, um, I believe the words used were, if the planning board doesn't agree, they can have it pulled at town meeting. But that's not how the process is supposed to go. These are important changes and big changes to the, the zoning bylaws. And, and frankly, um, I'm, I'm quite disappointed in, in the way this has gone with two corporate entities outside of the town of Carver promoting and proposing bylaw changes to our warrant that haven't been appropriately vetted by any of the uh, committees in regards to zoning. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Mr. Palmieri. Mike Palmieri, uh, 164 Plymouth Street. Uh, good evening. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I'll try to keep it brief. This is in regard to uh, the, in the not too distant future, tying into the North Carver Water District water supply, and I'm here uh, speaking as a private citizen and nothing else. Um, three or four times during the calendar year of 2021, we had public meetings here, and if, if, if someone was here, I do apologize, but I don't recall anyone from the select board being at any one of those meetings, although they were invited. Um, I believe at one or two of them, uh, the one of the past TAs, town administrators, was there. 
Um, DEP was always invited. They never showed up. One of the main issues that all of the residents that are being required to tie in to the North Carver Water District water supply on the Plymouth Street extension was having to pay a water bill. I'm not talking betterments. I'm not talking installation fees. I'm not talking about installations of a meter. The actual water bill. Everyone, and I don't speak for anyone else, but I know the consensus was from hearing everyone else, we did not feel, and I don't, I've not heard anything to the contrary, feel we should have to pay a water bill for a contamination to our wells that we did not cause as private citizens. Um, that, that all said, again, it was brought up to three or four of those meetings. I have brought it up at the North Carver Water District as a private citizen. I brought it up to uh, both the uh, current and past town administrators. I never got an answer. It was always punted around from, you know, well, that's a decision for the North Carver Water District. They say it's a decision for the town administrator. They say it's a decision for the select board. Um, I've never had the courtesy of an answer one way or the other. I use this as an example. I am a tradesperson. I know roughly what a water pump costs to run. Call it 5 to $7.50 per month. So let's, let's round it to 25 30 bucks a quarter. Right now, I believe from people I've talked to that pay a water bill, they're paying over $100 for their water bill. It is going to cost me money to no fault of mine or my wife's to hook up to this water system. I think it's wrong. I also understand that one of the concerns for the select board, I believe, and I'm, I'm not trying to speak for anyone, one of the things I've heard was um, that people in the past that were that had to hook up due to contaminated wells, uh, Lake and Ham Street, uh, the other side of Plymouth Street, <clears throat> to no fault of their own is they have to pay a water bill. I'm sorry, did they bring it up? Did they sue the town? I don't know, but that I feel for them. If I could turn back the, you know, the hands of time, I'd say they shouldn't have paid a water bill either, or they shouldn't now. Um, Last time I brought it up to anyone was the health agent. I don't fault him because he's the only one that really was reaching out <clears throat> through this whole process, through different select boards, you know, over the last number of years. Um, he said really, he said it really wasn't his concern. His concern was getting us tied in and his job was done. I do get that. Um, I did uh, reach out to Mr. Townsend. Uh, and I believe he probably shared my concerns with you. And again, my apologies for my spelling and grammar. I was sitting there in the middle of the night watching TV and not paying much attention to that. Um, I would, I know this is the 11th hour before town meeting. I don't know if this has, it. it's anything that would have gone to before town meeting anyways. Um, I would at some time in the near future like a response from the select board what the select board's position on this is. Because um, I know that this week they're going to bring the pipe and actually put it into my basement uh, before it's hooked up. Uh, I thank you very much for your time. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Palmieri. Is there anything else, anyone else from the public that would like to address the board? Sorry, just a quick one. Well, Mr. Shea, you've already addressed the board once. Yes, sir. And I'm requesting to address the board again. Is that problem on a on a different subject? on a different subject? I yes, sir. Try to. I, I I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Try. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I agree with Mr. Palmieri. I fought very hard at uh, the last couple um, town meetings to make sure that no unnecessary costs were uh, pushed off onto the properties that were contaminated by the uh, North Carver landfill, and. Uh, he has a very valid point where there should be an allotment based on the size of the house and water usage per annum. And that's something to consider. He didn't contaminate as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shane. All right. Anyone else from the public? All right. Moving along. Uh, Mr. Fenestine, am I correct? Our first item, the discussion and possible vote on polling hours for annual town election. The town clerk has requested that that 
be removed from the, Correct. the agenda, right? Town, so polling hours are going to stay 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Correct. All right. Okay. And the next item, the approval of the annual town election. Yes, Mr. Bell. So do we still have the vote on the annual town election warrant? Yes, we do. And you should have that okay. in your packet. All right, so just our next item is the approval of the annual uh, election warrant. Mr. Belden. Um, because I'm up for re-election, is that something that I can vote on this? I, I just, is this a standard? You just turn around, around the, and the, yeah, this, the uh, warrant. Okay. Yeah. I don't see a conflict. It, it's but it's because the warrant affects everyone yeah. equally. So. Just putting it out there. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the 2022 annual town meeting warrant. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Mr. Bellman. Um, isn't it the town election warrant? It is the 2022 annual town election warrant. Election warrant. That's, a, right. that's, that's what the town meeting warrant starts with, the election warrant. Yes. Well, that's what that I just want to make sure that, yeah, that this is, we have to sign this one. This, yeah, this is what we're. That's right. Co warrants. Correct, Mr. Sure. Mr. Fantasy. This is what this we're. This is it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will be posting these separately. <coughs> we have a, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. All right. Next up is uh, Chapter 61A, Indian Street, Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 20, Page 333. Is there anyone here to speak on that, sir? Hi, my name is Monty Say from I'm here on behalf of ADGA Realty. Uh, you know, we submitted this because uh, right now the entire land is under the 61A uh, program, agricultural, and it's part of the uh, cranberry bogs we have in Carver. So we developed a couple piece of Forum A lots on the Indian Street, and we would like to sell this, what they call it, number three and because based on the rules and regulations of the 61a the town has the right of first refusal and therefore we are asking the town if it's interested to buy it or they can waive their right so we can sell it All right. thank you any questions from the board yes. mr bell um i'm always looking for um affordable housing places to do it, um, looking at the price tag for this is 130,000, I think, if I remember correctly, somewhere around there for it. Um, but knowing that we're looking at doing an affordable on Green Street, I think that that would be a, uh, a better place to put that. Um, but I want to put it out there to people that it's not that I'm not for taking this property. I do have one question here is how much of these other lots do you own? and are they all out of 61A now, or do you intend on doing piecemeal? No. What we did last year, we, we did first lot 8 and 9, and then 4, 5, 6, 7. All of those are out of 61A. The town, uh, you know, approved. Uh, they waived their rights, and then we sold. Now the remaining, there is only lot 1 and lot 3. So we're selling now lot 3, and then the next will be I don't know when but we'll be lot one, and that's it. Thank you. Any we have, uh, just for you to know, we purchased 286 acres of cranberries. Half of the box was like, the vines were like no good and rotted. So we have to improve the cranberries and we paid a lot of money. So we're trying to sell those so can help us to continue our improvement program. So people now are abandoning the, the cranberries, are selling it, we're buying it, we're improving it. So, but it's cost a lot of time, a lot of money now. No, I understand that. I just was thinking in the process of if you maybe do them all at once, or instead no. of doing piecemeal, but I, I understand. If you see the plan, the other six already right. sold. Right. The remaining, there is only two. One, one, and, one three. and three. Right. That are less. So, 
maybe next time if you do come in, maybe think about doing both at the same time to save some time? No. We, we, ha we have a buyer now for the lot three. Okay. And then we don't have a buyer for lot one. one so yeah. anytime okay. we have a PNS, we have to approach the town. Yeah. And then the, the remaining right. only two is the three, which is a subject of tonight. Okay. And then the one, we don't have a buyer right, right now. Okay. okay. Anything, Thank you. Else, anything else from the board? And just as a point of point of interest for the people at home, we do have recommend recommendations uh, that the select board not uh, exercise their option to purchase the property from the town planner, the conservation agent, and the town assessor. So, is there is there a motion? I'll mo make a motion that we uh, we not exercise the right of first, right of first refusal. refusal. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, three to one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for keeping the cranberry in. Thank you for problem. your understanding. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up is an item to ratify the collective bargaining agreements for the union clerical dispatch and operation and maintenance. Uh, we are not ready to do that at this point. So when we move to our next item, which is a joint meeting with the Finance Committee, we're a little early for that joint meeting, and I don't see all of the members of the Finance Committee here, although I see the, the Finance Committee Chairman coming in. Mr. Mr. Germain, I don't know how many members you have coming tonight. Do you see anyone that you believe is coming to this meeting that's not here? Okay, thank you. Then, would other than that, I know that, that Ron Clark is not attending. Okay, so you're you're not sure exactly what time Mr. Mahar is going to make it to this room, correct? He's in the RDA. Okay, so we are we are ready for you folks right now. We could we could go into that joint meeting, or we could skip over that for now and go into our next agenda item and wait a few minutes. What would you prefer? Well, Okay, you, got, you want to wait? Yeah, go ahead. We'll All right. Ten, it's all that, right with you. That, that's fine. Um, so our next item is minutes, licenses, topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, our next meeting is, uh, according to this, is April 12th, 2022. But we do have a meeting on Friday morning at 9 o'clock. Mrs. Weston, I don't have the date for that. What is, what is the date of April Friday? 8th. Friday? April 8th. April 8th, okay, so we will be meeting April 8th at 9 a.m. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes of March 1st, March 10th, and March 15th. Is there a motion on March 1st? The move we approve the minutes of March 1st, 2022. Right. Is there a second? I'll second them if they can be approved with the amendments that I passed out to you guys tonight. Move that we approve the minutes of March 1st with the amendments we were given tonight. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Uh, the minutes of March 10th. I move we approve the minutes of March 10th, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I I wasn't there. Okay. Thank you. And March 15th. I'll second that. Okay. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, it is unanimous. Uh, we have several uh, requests for use of town property. Uh, first is Shirtliff Park on May 27th, 2022 for the Captain Pal preschool graduation. Uh, is there a motion? I move that? that we approve the use of town property for Shirtlip Park for the Captain Powell Preschool graduation on May 27th. All right. Is there a second? A second. Oh, All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Discussion, Mr. Belden? No. Um, uh, since this is a um, business here in town and I, they are a school and a preschool, I recommend we waive the fee for this yeah, I think that's appropriate well uh, you, you, we can do that but the 
thing we voted on last year was to waive the fee for town organizations and for nonprofits and for religious organizations. So. Okay. Right. But I think in this case, yep. it would be, I, I, I think it would be a good idea. I agree with Mr. Belvin. I'd like to mm -hmm. waive the, the fee here. Is so, there a um, motion to that? Yeah. Would you, would you, I don't know who. I'll who, rescind my second. Would, 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 Ms. Hollins, would you? Who, sure, who I'll, I'll make a motion. I made the motion, okay. so I'll make a motion that we approve the request for use of town property on May 27th, 2022, by Captain Powell Preschool and waive the fee. All right. I'll second second. That. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. We have a couple of other requests for town owned property that came in at the last minute. Uh, one is from the Carver Girl Scouts uh, to use. Uh, uh, this is West. What are you looking yeah. to use the gazebo on April 23rd at 10 a.m. Uh, for a uh, Carver Girl Scout information section and meeting? Um, I move we approve the gazebo for use by the Carver Girl Scouts on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022, at 10 a.m. Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Again, the the well, they're they a non -pro they're non-profit, okay, so they, their fee is waived. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. And we have another for business after hours networking reception, uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, to uh, to use what what one day special license. One day special license. I'm sorry. All right, but it's going to take place in their stores. In so. their stores, yeah. Um, is there a motion? I move that we approve the one-day special license for Habitat for Humanity on May 19th to be held in their restore location at 160 North Main Street. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Discussion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Mr. Belden. Um, I, I have a little concern about this that it says beverages will be served free of charge and no sales. Uh, this is just for chamber members there. Um, open bar, I, I, uh, I understand it's their business and the liability. I mean, are they using a service or are they doing this through themselves? Um, yeah, I actually had that same question my, myself. So. You know, obviously, it's up to you. Um, typically, if it was, for example, the Sportsman's Club, typically they would, the bartending service of New England, for example, would be the applicant, not the Sportsman's Club. So typically, the applicant is the one so, requesting the license. Yeah. Oh, that's not entirely correct. Um, with the Sportsman Club, typically, when, not we run, when we run a, a, a service, when we do it for ourselves, our own club, then <coughs> we get the permit ourselves as the club and we get a special liability insurance from our insurance company for that one day the license if we rent it out to another um, somebody else a rental for it they have to get a bartending service like new england bartenders right. and that's and what they we see. cover it so that's what i don't see here is that it is their insurance liability covered with this i don't see anything here and i don't see it's new england bartender services or another bartending service so it, and like I said it's the free of charge no sales I and they say about 40 members um, so I don't know I, I kind of want some I want some clarification on this I mean we have time before this, our yeah. next meeting. So, this, this is not till May 19th so right. can we can we try to get some additional yeah. information yeah. so the board has not required um, this type of information before but you can because right. that's what we require from our ABCC licensees. Right. So it's whatever the board would like to require. Yeah, I, I, I think if the board would be okay, I think we could just get that additional information. It would be, would be helpful. Yeah. Folks okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Thank so what you. What exactly are you looking for? Just the certificate of liability insurance? Yeah. Liability insurance, who's going to be the servers, mm -hmm. who's going to be checking IDs, um, tip served. Well, again, that it's type of, okay. So. All right, thank you. All right. Um, we have a request for Old Hobney Road Race on July 30th, 2022 uh, at 8 a.m. I'll a make motion? a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. All right. Mr. Germain, um, yes, sir. do you have? We do. Mr. Mahai does arrive. All right. Would you like to join us? Could we? Um, could we take like a two-minute recess just so we don't disrupt? Absolutely. Why don't we take a five-minute recess? Thank you. Call the meeting back to order. Uh, the next item on our agenda is our joint meeting with the Finance Committee, discussion and possible vote for recommendation of annual town meeting articles. Mr. Germain, would you like to call your, your meeting to order? Yes, I'd like to call the FinCon meeting to order for April 5th. Time is 6.40 in a joint session with the Select Board. All right. And the first item on our agenda is Article 2, the allocation of funds from fiscal year 2022 free cash. Mr. Germain. Now, we had tabled this, and then it remained tabled. We made a couple of changes um, to the way it's laid out, and we were hoping that we would have North Carver Water District here tonight because we have questions about this 198706. They seem to be pretty flush with cash this year, and, and we're wondering if perhaps we don't have to pick up that tab. But... but Mr. Tracy's not here tonight, Chairman Tracy, and so uh, he sent a bunch of documents out referencing something in a 2010 warrant, town warrant. We both looked at it. Beth looked at it. I looked at it. It seems to say that we will pay the bond, but it does not say in perpetuity. It doesn't go on and, and, and say for how long a period of time or what happens if they happen to have an exceptionally great year, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Sue, um, but they, they had like $700,000 this year? They have about that in there now. If you could just use the microphone. Sorry. Yeah, they have about that kind of money in there now. So they've got $700,000 sitting in their account, and they're asking us to pay $198,000 out of our, and I'm just confused as to why we're doing that. Mr. Fennessy, do you have anything to add here? This is, uh, this is the uh, cost that they... So this is this is the cost of their loan that they're paying off um, yearly. Uh, it, it fluctuates somewhat, uh, but generally it's in that ballpark of 190 thousand. So it's just been something that the town's been picking up all along. So uh, Mr. Tracy said he was going to be here to explain it. He's not, unfortunately. So. Has anyone heard from Mr. Tracy? Nothing. By email saying that he'd be here. Mr. Germain, is that, uh, as far as you know, is that your committee's only concern? Yes, that was the only one, uh, and the committee's, uh, I think, the, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody that's on the committee, um, I, I think we all felt that in the years that the North Carver Water District didn't do so well, absolutely, the town picked up the bond. Um, but this is the first time that they've had this kind of funding behind them. And, and in all honesty, there's a lot of stuff in the capital plan this year, and they've got plenty of money. So I'm, I'm just confused as to why we're doing their bid for the bond this year. Um, the only other change we made, if you'll permit me. Um, well, might, might I suggest just that we, we have three other articles to discuss here, that we move past Article 2, discuss the other three articles, see if Mr. Tracy okay. perhaps is just a little bit delayed, and okay. if he's not, we can, we can return to that. Is that, that okay with everybody? Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's move to Article 4, and then we'll, we'll come well, can back. I, can I give you one more tidbit on Article 2 so sure. we don't have to break into that? Sure. Um, if you look at Article 2 and you look at Article 4, I think what we suggested, because there's a, it's not a duplication, but we're suggesting that the capital plan be added as like in Article 2 as an I, in, in this case it would be the letter I, and then it would be that amount of money that's going to be over into Article 4 as a transfer so that it's not in two places in the warrant. You see the allocation of funds from free cash, and then that comes down to a million dollars, but there's more money than that. So we're going to move it so that the capital becomes an item, a line item, and it's going to show a number it will show transferred to Article 4. So that the thought process was at the meeting that 
10 years from now, when none of us are on these committees anymore, someone wants to go back and look historically, they're not going to be trying to figure out, well, how come free cash was on Article 2 for only a million dollars that year when they really had four million dollars that year? So we don't have to go digging through it to find out where it was. So it'll all total down in Article 2, but it will show an amount that would transfer over to Article 4. So that it would be very easy to find. You'd see the total amount. You'd say, oh, okay, that, that got transferred over to here so that now we know where it all went. So are you suggesting that we delete Article 4? No. No. We, we show a number on Article 4. I'm probably not explaining it right. Uh, You're Beth, just showing that we add, a, add an informational... Well, it, it becomes item I is what it would be. Transfer okay. to item I, capital, Article 4. Okay, and, and, that, have and a then number. reflect to Article right. 4. Okay, Mr. Fenn. So if I may, so we did that and sent it to the council, and they said you couldn't do that. You couldn't have it in two places. So instead, we put in the informational summary okay. right after it, saying that please note that the additional free cash amount of $2.1 million will be used to fund capital plan as shown in Article 4. Okay. So that's the reference to it. Because you couldn't have it in two, two articles. I didn't mean to waste all That's that. That's okay. Time. I didn't know. Because <laughs> we went through that same process from, from last time. I so. didn't know. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's discuss so article, so article 4, the capital improvement budget. I'm going um, to let Beth take Article 4, if you would be so kind, Beth. Right. Sure. Ms. Salga? Hi, guys. Um, I'm here with Marie Zwegman. She's also vice chairman of capital. Right? Thank you. Beth, can you okay. use the mic so yeah, people at home can hear you? Sorry, guys. Okay, so capital outlay met several times on the capital budget. Um, so as we just talked about, free cash did come in higher than was planned. Can you guys, can you hear me? Um, so what we ended up doing with the capital budget was everything that was asked for except for a brush breaker by the fire department, which is pushed out to next year, is on this capital plan. To make this happen, though, what we need to do um, there's one project, which is the library HVAC system. That project is probably more in the tune of a million six to a million eight to complete. The quote they originally had is about a million six, but with the cost of everything going up, they, you know, Dave does feel like it's going to be a million eight. That project we feel like has to happen. So what we've done um, in our capital budget is. For FY23, we've allotted the 960000 which you can see here in um, a Z at the bottom of the capital. And then for next year, we've allotted 500000 for the FY24. In the meantime, to have this work, instead of bonding, what we're looking at is doing short-term borrowing. So that would be a short-term loan where we would pay interest only at 2.5%. And then at that point, when the project's over, which could be FY24 or 25, we have the 960 already reserved, plus anything else we come up with ne next year. And we've only paid interest. We can put the whole amount down, part of it down, um, and pay it off right away. So that's the big ticket item on here. Um, all of these other items <coughs> were presented through all of the individual departments. Um, Jaws of Life came up, the radio towers have come up. So we have gone through um, very many times through this and we felt as if all of these items were needed. But the biggest one that we were unable to really nail down was this library, HVAC, and that was the best solution we thought for our town, was to do the short-term borrowing. Okay. Um, do you guys have questions on Thank any you. of these projects that are on uh, here? Members of Select Board, anyone? I, I think that's a good solution, yeah, short-term borrowing. That's what we would, would, that was the best solution we thought we could do, um, especially since we already had a big portion of the money there that we could earmark already, put it aside for next year. I agree. And I think it's important that this project get, get completed. It's been out there too long. It has. And at this point, this is until the, you know, July 1st of 23, so they're not going to have air conditioning either this summer. So right. if we push this off, we're looking at two years. Right, but at least we're we're on the road to getting it getting it completed. We know there's some certainty that the project's going to get done. Exactly. So. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention too, none of these take into consideration any ARPA funding that could be out there for our town in the future. So I just want to put that out there. You know, if ARPA funding becomes available, we may want to look at something like the HVAC or the radio towers 
that are on here. And I do know the town of Plymouth applied for those. Okay. Thank you. Uh, members of the board, select board, anything? Mr. Belvin? Just, um, me, I want to get the X one here about, so it says reduction of debt was 960,000 for the library HVAC. And then we're going to bond out the 1.8 mm -hmm. in lieu of that money or? Yes, so the way it works is we'd have to short term borrow the 1.8 so that we have it set aside so that we can go up to bid. So they'll give us that 1.8. However, we have in our reserve account the 960,000. Okay. So when we go to pay, um, you know, yeah. pay the balance, we have that there to put right down. Right into it. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. And we only That's pay good. the interest as we draw the funds. Right. So uh, I think Sue also explained we could do it almost like an equity line of credit where you could eat up the first 960 and have the 1.8 and then use the first 960 or 900 and then say okay now we need 250 300 400 whatever and that's all we end up borrowing so there's there's two or three different scenarios with that picture um, they worked real hard this was three meetings that they had to go through uh, we did a couple of meetings with fincom on it my hats off to them I think this is something that, that was absolutely owed to the town. This has been a long time coming, um, going back to when we were trying to do, and, and we knew about it then, when we were trying to do the addition on the back of the, the library, they knew that it was part of it was because it needed an HVAC system. So this goes way back. Um, it's going to be, according to Dave, it's 14 units, and there'll be individual units, so that we'll never go through this again. It won't be stuck up in the attic where you can't get to it and take the roof off to fix something. It's going to be individual units that can be serviced, replaced as they need to be replaced. It's a new heating system as well. Uh, and the only thing that's really going to be reused, according to Dave, is the, uh, the ductwork. Some of the ductwork will be used for makeup air because now the state requires you bring in outside air, fresh air, to a commercial building, to a municipal building. Um, so. Um, Capital voted on this. Uh, I believe that, that, that their vote was unanimous. It was, 4 to um, 0. And FinCom voted on it, and our vote was 6 1 1 with Beth abstaining. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trevay. Is there anything else from the select board? I just have a question for, um, Ms. for details. Sure. Uh, letter R and letter Y, what are they? How are classrooms okay. getting modernized? I should have brought the. I should have brought their plans. They did give it to us. Um, they're going to be up. So what they told us was the, the classrooms when they when they built them at the new high at the new elementary school okay. was right on the cusp of when technology was changing. So the next year it changed from smart boards um, to another type of like uh, something similar to a smart board, but it's a little different. So they need to update all of that equipment now. So the new school is already outdated? Yes, it was outdated a year after it was put up. Wow, okay. And then yeah. what is why? Why? I believe, Sue, can you just correct me if I'm wrong on this? I believe this is um, capital, the short-term interest that we're paying back from a prior project, the 85000 A portion of it that, where it says short-term interest. The um, disclosure is a financial statements that we need to provide in order to get our standard and poor's, poor's rating. So we've got a company behind the scenes that does the work for us on that. And is that the project management too? Um, I can't answer that. It's the same wording as it was last year. I know what the other two are, but I'm not sure about the project management. Does anyone have project management? I don't, but I can look into it. Yeah. We can look into it. The project management? Yeah. So the project management um, is used for contracts and procurements that might not be funded 100% in full. Sometimes things come up after the fact, and it's kind of like a, a backup. Can you give me an example of one, like, recently? Oh. Actually, we have, I don't think we've had any recently. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I can get you an example tomorrow. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, how much of this 85000 is in this project management portion of it do we know we don't it's I think it's the a placeholder that they use every year but I, I believe this may have been where they used when they would do in the library HVAC they had to pay $50,000 for the right. engineering study that 
could have come out of something like this. Perfect example. <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> okay. Anything else? Mr. Fantasy, do you have anything to add? Uh, no. Ms. Uh, Jim Hoffman was a selectman's representative on the committee, and they all worked well together. So right. well, thank you, Beth. Oh, thank yes, and you. Andy Cotterelli also from the school committee, and Marie. And this was this was tough this year. <laughs> thank you. And just so for clarity, so the capital improve capital uh, outlay voted unanimously in favor. Yes. And Mr. Germain, what was the select the finance committee vote again? The FinCom vote was six one one. Thank you. And Beth abstained because she was abstaining as a member of FinCom, but also as the chair of Capital. All right. Yes. If, um, just for clarification for everyone else, if these monies come in less here, the money goes back into the general fund, correct? Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there a motion to recommend from the select board? I recommend we approve Article 4, Capital Improvements Budget. I'll right. second that. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? I just want to thank you guys very much for all your hard work on this. Thank you. I, I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Next up is uh, Article 6, Community Preservation Committee Report and Recommendations. Uh, Mr. Bentley, would you like to join? Yeah, class? please, because we tabled this because I guess we had some questions. Excuse me? Uh, uh, we don't have Article 5 on our agenda. On We've already voted it. It's already yeah, no. No, on our agenda is 2, 4, 6, and 7. Yeah, we already voted, voted Article 5. five. Already voted five. If you've already voted it, that's fine. Yeah. Article, Article 6 is contingent upon Article 5 passing. So, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> because it, it's acquisition of 11 Green Street uh, by the select board and the, the project that we're proposing, the Community Preservation Committee is proposing, is 11 Green Street. So, so, so for your for your information, the Select Board voted five five zero to recommend. Great, Article Five. Uh, that's that's great. So I'm Bob Bentley. I'm the chairman of the Commu Community Preservation Committee. Um, we have uh, Article Six. It's presented in two two uh, parts: Part A and Part B. Part A is is really boilerplate. It uh, consists of uh, mandated uh, revenues being set aside for historic preservation, for affordable housing, and for open space slash recreation. Um, so, and we also have a, uh, a line item for the payment of the uh, high, high school, middle, middle high school tr uh, track and field uh, debt, which is a bonded, bonded issue. Um, so we, that's part A. That's, again, pretty much boilerplate. We, we submit this every year to town meeting. Uh, it hasn't seemed to run into problems in the past. Uh, it, it is mandated by law, so. And then part B is, is really the, the majority of what we're interested in getting, uh, to, well, I'm, I'm presenting tonight, is basically uh, taking a proposal from Habitat for Huma Humanity uh, that came into us uh, and came up with a proposal for an affordable housing uh, renovation on 11, at 11 Green Street. It's basically an entire re renovation of the, of the house. It's, in, it's in, into a three bedroom. Uh, the initial sale of the house will be for a veteran uh, and it has, they have to meet certain affordable criteria. Uh, they're, 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 and this house will, will be maintained in, in perpetuity as an affordable house. If the veteran, even though they're gonna get a great deal, if the veteran decides to sell, uh, apparently according to Department of Community and Housing Development, the, the restriction to, to keep it in, in a uh, veteran, uh, as a veteran owned home cannot be retained. It has to be opened up to be veteran or any affordable housing. So it has to be affordable, but uh, and it, it, they have to go through all sorts of hoops. Um, <clears throat> Habitat, a, as I think you know, um, came into the, into town in I'd say 2008, but I may be wrong on the year. Uh, but they built a house on Mazzilli Drive. Uh, we 
the Community Preservation Committee came up with $95,000 in materials only. They came up with all of the other in-kind labor uh, and provided all, all, all the labor, all the other materials and services that were required. They, they've come to us and asked us for $125,000. Uh, I wrote the article specifically so that it, it's not looked on as an outright grant of $125,000 to Habitat. It is, they get to spend $125,000 on materials, which does happen to include uh, professional services like a plumber and electrician. Uh, but they, they get to spend $125,000 on that. If they spend only $100,000, that $25,000 $25, comes back into the unrestricted fund of the Community Preservation Committee, um, which is in keeping with the way the committee has been running our, our affairs forever. Um, we have a strong oversight of, of the, uh, each project. We actually name a member of the committee to oversee the project, uh, and they keep in, they'll be keeping in close contact with the exec executive director of Habitat. Uh, that person uh, then will, they, they will be getting the, the invoices. The invoices will, will be uh, provided to, to the committee, and in, in accordance with our agreement with the uh, town accountant, we, ba we basically have two signatures and a wet signature that are required by, by them in order to get the, the bills paid. Uh, Habitat knows that they have to follow uh, procurement laws, and they're will willing to do that. It's going to be broken down into small bite-sized pieces, uh, so it won't be a, a full $125,000 RFP that they're going to go out with. But it's going to be broken into small bite-sized pieces. We think this is a great thing, great opportunity for the town. Uh, we've been looking to do some some more affordable housing th things in town, and have really tried hard, and have had very very little luck in terms of getting projects underway, or project even proposed to us. Uh, we're hoping. Uh, I know that Dan Badger has been doing a lot of work on this. But we're hoping uh, that uh, they, and the Habitat has been working carefully with the veterans organizations. We're hoping to actually use this as a model for future acquisitions in town, so that we can get a more affordable housing in town, uh, and b help out uh, needy families. Thank you, uh, Mr. Germain. Did I think that um, I think what you do is a great thing. So don't misunderstand. I think our only question was there was comments about um, committee administrative expenses and no definition as to what that was, and then there was talk about a bond, and we weren't aware that you had a bond outstanding to pay. So that's the only reason we tabled it. Um, we're trying to, just as a matter of information for everyone, we, and, and, and Sue will laugh at this, but we're trying to get away from this other professional services, other contractual services. Um, just because of that word, other, and nobody knows. We throw money into this line item and, and there's no definition. So I think that this coming year, Sue has been so gracious to say that they'll still have the other professional services, but then it will have a little bit of a, a notation as to what some of these services are. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to see what is all going on. And that was our only reason for tabling this, because it said committee administrative expenses, and we didn't know what that was. And honestly, we never spend all of that ever. So um, what, the, the big, big, big expense we have is um, our dues to the Community Preservation Coalition, and and they provide us with a huge amount of, of uh, resources. Uh, they almost take the place of town council when we have real legal legal questions. So we don't have to pay any any fees for town council. Um, it. You know, we also use it for obviously our secretarial service, right. um, but uh, we never spend all of the money. It, it and the money go, money would go directly back into the un unrestricted fund, anyways. So it's it's coming in as as CPC monies to start with. Um, I take pride in, in not spending a lot of money. I appreciate that. Uh, did anybody on on FinCom have any other questions? I, I had one. I just have one question on the Habitat for Humanity project. 
So what would happen if, if the veteran had passed away and he leaves all his assets to a child or an heir? Um, what happens at that point? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. uh, Just what you said, if he sold it, you know, part of the money comes back. But what happens if he leaves it to someone or she leaves it to someone? I, I would think that uh, if it's a family, it, it, would, be, it would be kept in the, in a, in the family. Uh, it would still be ma maintained or retained as an, as an affordable house. Uh, if they sell, they, they are not allowed to make a humongous profit. You know? okay. It's okay. not like you can get a, you know, take it and a year later flip it for $100,000 or something right. like that. They're not allowed to do that. There are very strict guidelines in, in terms of what they can sell it for. So, so they're not, not allowed to reap a windfall. So and is that stopped at the sale? You know, how... How does that get caught? Yeah. It, that gets stopped at the sale. Habitat okay. actually is overseeing the whole thing all, okay. all the way along. And they're, they're really the ones who are uh, overseeing the whole thing. And one thing I should mention is that uh, Habitat is doing all the pro procurement. Uh, so, you know, Jim Mil Middleton, the executive director, is doing all, all the procurement. Uh, we are following the procurement laws, but he's doing all, all of the contracting for services. Mr. Belvin, mm, Mr. No. Fennessy, it looks like you both uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll let, I'll, I'll, so. I mean, I, I have my knowledge and... Yeah, so there'd be a deed restriction on the deed. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. that if they try to sell it for a profit, it would kick in. Yes. That, that so always that's happens, yeah. yeah. There's going to be a, a strict deed restriction. We've we had our, our public meeting on March 17th, had a long discussion with uh, the executive, executive director about that, and mm -hmm. he explained the, the intricacies of the deed. Mr. So, Belvin, um, is the Carver Housing Authority part of this also discussion? Because sometimes the Housing Authority is actually the um, agency that oversees how the affordableness comes in play and that um, they run the lottery on how it becomes a, whoever gets the position uh, to live in that house. Is, is that the process? Because, I mean, having Habitat for Humanity I, I have a, other questions to do with that, but I'll just leave it at that. Is our Carver Housing Authority the ones overseeing the, um, the process? It's my understanding that the DCHD, Department of Community and Housing Development, are, is the one that's overseeing the process. Uh, Carver Housing Authority actually is not an a, uh, entity of the town of Carver. It's actually an entity of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, so it's... Uh, I know that Habitat is over overseeing the whole thing, but they're having a lot of input from DCHD. Okay. Can I, can I have other? All right. So uh, to go back to Mazzilli Drive, this, this is one of the things that I, I've researched. All right. The, the town sold the property for like $60,000. Don't quote me on that actual number or whatever, but sold the property for that to how. Then the town gave Habitat Community more money to update that build that house and whatnot for that property. Then they mortgage the property for $100,000 at no interest rate to that person. And then they had to get another, I think, $25,000 from another bank, all right, which there was interest on that one. I think it was a low, lower interest or whatever. So Habitat and Humanity walks away with $125,000 that, so I mean, we have one that we're going to turn around and negotiate the sale of the property in the house, all right, with Habitat Humanity or whatever organization it is, all right, on a prior article. Then now we turn around, we're going to give them money from CPA to help build it. Then they're going to mortgage it off to this person where they're going to get another 100000 on the other end. If, if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I don't believe that I am not under the impression that as a nonprofit, uh, Habitat for Humanity is in the business of, of making profit. I think that's the definition of a nonprofit. Um, and there's no guarantee, even though Habitat is being, if this passes, would be given the, the, the money to do the complete um, rehabilitation, is that what you called it? Then it, that's no guarantee that they would be the ones the town would sell it to if that article to sell the house as a veteran and affordable unit passes the town meeting we still have to go and do an RFP for that so it could be another organization and I think Habitat understands that well, Mr. Chairman I just if you look at the deed 
on the Zilli Way, it clearly shows that Habitat for Humanity received $100,000 because they, they sold that property to the resident, all right, for $125,000. Uh, it was like a $25,000 mortgage, and they had they also Habitat for Humanity got hundred grand. So they ended up getting $125,000 from that property. So it's not that it, they're a nonprofit. No, I understand that. My feeling here is that this may become another one where they're going to have more money on the other end of this. When but, it's sold. but you're suggesting that they're making a profit, and I don't believe that's the case. Well, then what would you, what would you call? I, I they, haven't they looked at on, that particular deed, Mr. Bell. On Missouri Way, yeah. I haven't looked at that particular deed, well, but my that, understanding my, is that they take, that's my concern. They that, take money for costs. And then that's it. They're not out to make a profit. I mean, that's. It was, it was a zero interest rate loan. Uh, all right. But I think okay, so I just want to, you guys to be aware, all right, about understand <clears throat> what happens when they go to mortgage this, where have, have, if they get it, where they mortgage it from, and, and where that money, when it gets mortgaged, whose is going to? Okay. Uh, Mr. 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 Germain, Chair. I believe you were going around to your co your committee members. Yeah, so um, get a little astray here. Not not to beat this to death, but um, since Mazzilli Drive was in two thousand and what? Eight, I think Eight, it was. Eight. Like yeah. Um, has there have there been any other projects done since then? No. With um, Habitat. So no. another what no. my point is is their entire structure could have changed, and we don't know. And 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 frankly, Mazzilli Drive has nothing to do with Article. That's Six. Correct. Um, That's correct. So uh, I, I'm sure that CPC will oversee and, and do their due diligence. They've been doing this for a little while. I think you've been chair for more than a couple of days. Um, <laughs> we kind of have a little bit of faith in that. So uh, <laughs> anybody else on the committee? I'll take a motion on Article 6. CPC voted this 6-1-1. Thank you. I need Motion a fin to approve Article 6 as presented in the warrant. Thank you. Second. Motion to approve Article 6 as presented in the warrant has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Is there any further discussion from the select board? Hearing none, is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to uh, rec Seven, recommend Article 6, I'll Community second. Preservation Committee report and recommendations. We have a motion and a second. Uh, aim for the discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could just segue into one little thing real quickly. Um, I don't know whether you knew, but uh, the uh, CPC funds that came, came from the state were, were dispersed in no November. There was a surplus in the budget. There was a second disbursement in January. Uh, overall, the statewide average for, for CPC disbursements from the state was 43.8%. Carver, because we're at a 3% we're, we're town, got uh, a mere 80.3%. 80, 83. 80.3. 80. Nice. So that means eight cents on every dollar, uh, eight, 80 cents on every dollar comes back to the town. Uh, so I just want to let you know that. Oh, that, that's great information. Thank you for letting us yeah. know. And thank you for attending tonight, Mr. Bentley. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Bob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, so our next item is Article 7, which is collective bargaining. Uh, so, yes, Mr. Fennessy, this is the item to fund uh, the items that we had to push off till Friday morning, right. correct? Right. So, Mr. Absolutely. Germain, so you know the collective, the select board has not taken any action on those collective bargaining agreements yet. Well, I don't think that was part of us anyhow. We're That's not on that, more on that article. Well, Article 7 is on the agenda for our joint meeting. Well, if you look at Article no, 7, yeah. there's no place for the FinCom to weigh in. That's, yeah. that's fine. I'm just, that's on the I'll be more than agenda. happy to weigh in, but there's no place there's, to weigh in. There's nothing to weigh in on right now. Okay. So uh, I guess we're back to Article 2. I, I don't see Mr. Tracy here, so. Hold on, Mr. Chairman. Adam? Um, I just want to, I think procedurally, it makes sense for the FinCom to revote Article 4. Uh, the dollar amount is different than what we voted on about last week. It's now, now reflects $4,039,188. Uh, 
2016. What was added to this article since we voted on it was for $260,000 for the ambulance and $123,156 for the transfer of capital investigation was not listed under the dollar amounts, and therefore we voted a dollar amount that was less than $400,000 approximately. So I just, I just think procedurally, since we voted on a dollar amount at the last meeting, it makes sense to think on the re -vote. And we came up with the reason why that number was different, am I right? Well, the, the dollar amount that we had was $3.3 million, and what was reflected in the original draft warrant was $3.6 million, because it took into account some other items that we, we highlighted what they were. But the difference from what we voted on at our last meeting and this meeting is the $260,000 for the ambulance and the $123,156 that's being transferred to capital stabilization. They were listed in the informational summary, but the dollar amounts were not listed in the breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so the, the total dollar amount at our last meeting was three million six hundred and fifty-five thousand. So you you want to revote? I just think procedurally it makes sense. Off if this, we highlighted the dollar amount in our vote. I think we should revote. And I'll take that motion. We okay. can revote based on the April 12, 2022 printout um of the town meeting warrant which is I, I understand it's april 5th but this is the date on this copy i, I assume this is a final or it's not a final now because yeah. it's the one that was on the table yes everything's fine so this is current today current today but it's dated april 12th that's the date of town meeting i know that so it's not a draft anymore it's a okay. final version okay so this one all right. Can I just ask one question? So, did we have to put the two hundred and sixty thousand in here, even though it is being paid out of the EMS department? It was suggested by town council. That's why it was okay. Out. That's why it came up. Yeah. Comes in and goes out. Yeah, it is a capital item, but we're not paying it technically out of our capital right. fund. They, this is how they buy all their ambulances or yeah. whatever they do over there. They, they we take they buy they we pay for it, then they put they it back. Trans reimbursed. Good. Yeah. Thank you for that. So I'll take a million. I'll take a motion on the four million thirty-nine thousand one hundred and eighteen for Article Four, as printed in the current town warrant. Second. No, I need a motion. Make a motion to approve Article Four as written for four million thirty-nine one hundred eighteen dollars. Motion made and seconded to approve Article 4 is printed in the current version of the warrant um, for 4039118 Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Now abstain. So we end up at the same place we were before. All right. Well, actually, we don't know because Ron's not here, so this is a different vote. Now we're back to Article 2. Hold on. <laughs> Just hold on a second. <laughs> 511 <coughs> vote. Do you want to? Well, you can't do capital outlay because you don't have a quorum. We don't have a quorum. Okay. So now, would you like us to adjourn? Well, I'd like to go back and discuss Article 2. Oh, okay. We can do that. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, you are. If I may, I just wanted to um, make a suggestion that since um, Mr. Tracy is unable to be here tonight, that we leave this amount in there, even though I know that their budget says. It appears to us that they have certainly have enough to cover this. There's, there may be something that we have no clue about, and and this that can always be reduced or gotten rid of at town meeting. Well, but like we to, can't put it back in. No, I agree. <laughs> yeah. No, um, no, it, I agree with, well. with with your permission, um, I would like to see it get tabled. We typically have a meeting just before town meeting. Uh, the select board also has a meeting just before town meeting. We we don't always have a meeting before town meeting. Mm. There's a lot going on. This. Mm -hmm. You yeah. think you'll have a meeting before town meeting? Mm -hmm. At this point, we don't know. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a meeting before oh, town meeting. Okay. <laughs> you guys could do what you want with this, yeah. but I would like to see us table it till we get some information. Maybe you could reach out to Mr. Tracy. I'll and do that again. Yeah. This, will the, this will be the third time we've asked him to come talk about it. I know. Third well, time we've tabled it because we can't. Well, we don't need to get personal, I don't think. Well, well we it's not personal. It's town business. Right. And somebody's requesting $200,000. And three times it's been requested to come in and talk to the board about it. It's nothing personal. It's a matter of process. And three times this individual has been invited and we haven't had a meeting. Three times. So it's not personal. I think we should remove it. Right on there. Okay. 
was a suggestion last time that, that we were going to give them one more time to show up so they could explain why they needed the money. <coughs> they have 700000 that they didn't know about. Um, so now, why are they asking for another 200 I don't think, I think this was put in here before they knew they had the ex excess in their account. So Mr. even if we take it up, they still have the excess in the account if there's any issues. Mr. Belden. Um, I have a suggestion, and I don't know if this is possible, that um, we remove the 198. We keep it as a as a number there, I mean, as a title there, but not put a number. Can we do that or no? We have to have a number to go. I mean, we can always lower the, the amount, but you can't add a number, right? No, I'm not adding a number. I'm just taking the number out, the 198. Well, can, then you would have to this? add a number afterwards. Mr. Later. Fennessy, could we do this? Could we take a vote on items A, C, D, E, F, G, and H, and just take no action on, on B? You could do that, yeah. And, and, and leave that for town meeting? Yeah, that? and if I can say, you know, we don't know why he's not here. Right. He could have had a family emergency yeah. or something yeah. else. That, so, right. so I think that's, that's a good idea. My suggestion is that we take it. a vote on everything except B, and, you know, if we have to leave it for town meeting and Mr. Tracy has to make a statement in front of town meeting, then... Then he can make a statement. I do think that um, that they were shocked when they found they had five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I was I was at that meeting with Sue, and and when she read off the number, they were visibly like, really? So this could very well be a number that was plugged in before they got their could, numbers. Could be could be anything. We don't from Mr. Sue. No, so Mr. Belvin? I don't have a problem with doing it that way. Okay. I was just going to make that motion is that um, we approve everything except for B in Article 2. All right. Motion to recommend. I motion to recommend everything except for B. Is there a second? Ms. Rudolph, is there a Point of information, no. Mr. Chairman. I, I think you have to be more specific. B. I think you have to, you can't do except for because B could be something else when it gets printed again or, or whatever. Just, didn't just right here. Just, uh, just simply make a motion to approve. Items A, C, D, E, F, G, and, and H. And H. Perfect. But would you right. amend your? I'll motion? amend that to include A, C, D, E, F, G, and H. No. Is there a second from the select I'll board? Second that. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the select board? All, right. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Um, Mr. Mr. Germain. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to offer the same motion, um, if we could have the same motion to mimic that of the select board, A, C, D, E, F, G, and H on Article 2. Um, yeah, on Article 2. Okay, it's so moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve Article 2, items A, C, D, E, F, G, and H as printed in the warrant. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Did you vote yes? Well, I didn't hear. You didn't hear me say no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean you voted yes. It did say yes. Thank you. So. All right. Mr. Germain, is there anything else from the FinCom this evening? That's it. Um, if, if Mr. Fennis, he'd be so kind as to reach out. Well, I shall. Uh, and find out. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Moquin, Mr. Fennessy, do either one of you have anything for the joint meeting? Uh, no, I think we're all set. No, no, no we're set. set. Thank you. Right. Mr. Germain? Yeah. Take a motion to adjourn the FinCon. I'll make a motion to adjourn the FinCon. Second. second. My motion made and seconded to adjourn the FinCon. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, we don't thank have you. a whole lot left. Mr. Bur Mr. Bell, please. Um, before you guys go, I want to say thank you very much for all your help um, with our town. Uh, the FinCom is one of those things that I look towards uh, at town meetings to see how you guys vote and what you guys do. So I um, just want to say thank you very much for all your time and effort with our town. Yeah, we thank certainly you. appreciate you taking multiple days to, to join us here at our select board <laughs> meeting. So thank you very much. And thank Sue, you, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, you've opened our eyes up to a lot of different things going on, so I appreciate it. You just go back for more. We don't have a whole lot left on our agenda, so I don't think we need to adjourn here. We'll just give the Finance Committee a minute to, to leave, and then we'll finish up with the 
select board. Give us the boot. We're on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Germain. Have a good Thanks evening, so. everybody. All right. The next item on our select board uh, agenda is select board notes. There are none. So, select board community announcement. Ms. Bogart. None. All right. Mr. Belden? Um, just, sorry. Uh, just to let everyone know that um, the Boy Scouts still have bottle and cans behind the ambulance building. Uh, so, if you have bottle and cans, please help them out. Uh, they do plan on having a, um, a trip coming up. And also, just keep, keep watching the TV about Ukraine. Um, we need to support them in any way, shape, or form for our country, for democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Yours. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone that next Tuesday night at 6 o'clock is our annual seven. Seven, seven excuse me, is our annual town meeting at the Carver Middle High School. Um, all town residents who are registered voters are welcome to attend. And I want us to keep in our, our hearts and minds um, Shane. Thank you, Ms. Yours. Uh, and I also just want to remind everybody about a town meeting next week. Uh, the warrant is now on the website, so feel free to, to check it out. Uh, also, our town elections on April 23rd. Uh, these are both your chances to take have a direct voice in our town. So please attend town meeting, vote in the election, and uh, don't lose your voice. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, everybody.